Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another Word on a Wednesday. And you're looking at it and say, wait a second, I thought this was chatting with Chase. Well, we're kind of combining those two together. We want to streamline and give you every single week an encouraging word. Sometimes that's going to come from the Word of God. Sometimes it's going to come from conversation with some friends. So hope you enjoy uh, this week's Word on Wednesday where I get the honor, the privilege, the joy, the just great opportunities to be in a hot box right now. This room is hot. Yeah. I don't know if you can't tell, but if we start sweating, yeah. it's just it's a little warm in uh -huh. here right now. To be in a room with my friend Carlos Barroa. Hey, I like that. Barroa. I, like that I work nice. on it all the time. He's Latino now. Latino. <laughs> I'm I'm working on it. So thank you so much for letting me chat with you, man. Uh, there's so many people out there that are like, hey, I, I recognize him. I think I know him, but we have so many people new to River's Edge and a lot of people watching us online that are like, I, who's Carlos Barrow and why are you talking to him? So uh, in a minute or less, just right. help people know who is Carlos Barrow. All right. So hello, everybody who I haven't had the chance to meet you. Yet. I can't wait to meet you. As Chase has said, my name is Carlos Barroa. I'm married to the lovely and beautiful Kelly Barroa, and she's going to love that I'm saying that. Um, and I have two beautiful children. I have a son named Silas and a, a daughter named Lila. And I've actually been at River's Edge for almost four years now. Isn't that crazy? So um, I was hired on here as a ministry assistant, which meant cleaning toilets, doing construction work, helping out with kids, helping out with youth kids, uh, anything you name it. And I transitioned over into the kids uh, teacher. And I've been doing that for probably about a year and a half, too, focused um, in the kids room, which is our K through fifth. And I've loved it. Um, right now, I got hired into Campus Life. And I'm the Holt director now. And I'm loving it. It's been interesting to be in relational ministry during COVID. But it's been cool to see how God can still move even during COVID. Um, and I also work at Jackson National Life part-time. And I'm also currently finishing up my bachelor's degree at Great Lakes Christian wow. College. So a lot on the plates. Lot. But I'm thankful for all of them. So, yeah, two yeah. things you missed that I needed to tell about you. Well, three, Kelly is our worship leader. So if you see the lady leading worship most weeks, that's his bride. Uh, yes. I mean, I'm not going to say that I you know, brought them together, but I'm just going to say that I brought yeah. them together. Uh, you know, no big deal. Uh, third, second thing, uh, now one of the things you're doing uh, with us, and we might as well throw this out at the beginning, for all you college age ministry folk, that means like you're graduated and within the next four to five-ish years, yeah. you know, that, that's kind of, yeah. that kind of age range. Uh, we're starting up here very soon. We'll get more details out to you. Uh, college age ministry. Um, so basically a, a time to create an opportunity, a circle for college age kids to connect with other college age kids. Yeah. And and uh, we're really excited. Carlos yeah. is going to kind of lead that for us. And so we're really Super pumped for yeah. what that's going to look yeah. like. And the third thing you missed, I just think this is cool that most people don't know about you. A really unique thing. Yeah. Carlos loves baseball. Love it. Not just loves baseball, he played semi-pro baseball. Like, how many people you know played semi-pro anything, you know? Like, that's pretty awesome, dude. You don't want to brag awesome. about it, but I will. I Out in that. Cali? So, the semi-pro was in Traverse City, Tra Michigan. Oh, okay. yep. So, I played summer baseball for a collegiate league in California. Oh, okay. And then after okay. that was when I got offered my uh, semi-pro semi -pro contract. Yeah. in yeah. where? Traverse City, Traverse Michigan. City, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. so it's for the cool. beach bums. Beach bums! Beach bums! Let's go! <laughs> anyway, that's a cool thing about him. And so, he also does some... Uh, some some stuff with baseball right yeah. now, like so. What yeah. do you call that? What, what's that word? Uh, instruct. I'm an individual. I'm a teach. You know, teacher, coach, instructor. However you want to word it. But yeah, personal do trainer. Yeah, personal trainer. You know, I need a personal trainer. But <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, do individual lessons and help coach That's with cool, kids. Man. Man, I love it. I love it. That's that. so cool. So. Uh, so he's an awesome dude. If you ever hear me talk about someone on our staff when I when I'm preaching, talk about them that that loves hugs. That's Carlos. Carlos is the guy when he was our ministry assistant. He'd hug me when he'd show up in the morning. He'd hug me when he'd go to lunch. He'd hug me when he'd come back to lunch. He'd hug me when it's time to go home that day. If I saw him on Sunday, he'd hug me again. I'm like, bro, calm down. All right? We're going to be okay. I mean, is it is it a great day without at least three hugs? Uh, the same sure. 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 Well, one of the reasons I really want to talk to you, Carlos, is, is everything. We All sorts of stuff going on in our world. And some of these conversations have been about uh, different things. A lot of our conversations I've had with people have been about diversity and have been about the racism and racial tension in our world and just all that's happening and connecting that to Jesus and our walk with Christ. And and so if you can't tell in the video, uh, Carlos is, is diverse. You know, he's not 100% white. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that because um, I think, you know, speaking from that um, part of, of being half white and half 
Cuban. Cuban. Yeah, my dad will say Puerto Rican, but it's Cuban people. <laughs> he's born in Cuba, but he's raised in Puerto Rico, but okay, we're Cuban. So born okay. in Cuban. Yeah, yeah born raised in, yep. in Puerto Rico. That's yeah. your dad, Tico yep. Beroa. Tico Beroa. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so, so tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah. So no, uh, my parents met in college. My mom's from Lansing. You know, my mom is white, um, and my dad is was from Puerto Rico and came to Chicago. Went to Trinity University. That's where my mom and dad met. Um, total different worlds i yeah. feel like my dad was not a believer he was <laughs> this big brown cuban man and my mom uh comes from a christian home my grandfather was a pastor and um and she's white mm. and they met in college um and uh ended up falling in love and mm. got married in 1985 december 7th i remember mom and dad see Woo, wow. i got it so uh yeah it's it was cool man i mean growing up in a mixed home for me most neighborhoods i grew up in were very diverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would even say when we moved, I lived in Puerto Rico for four years when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And then for the ages I remember, we moved back to Lansing. My dad got a job at a church and the neighborhood I lived in was predominantly black. So I grew up in black culture. Yeah. I had black families, all my black friends I hung out with growing up. And so uh, that was, you know, a culture that I really gravitated towards because that's what I grew up in. But uh, I think for me, it was cool to kind of grow up um, in a mixed family because I could mm -hmm. see both sides of things. And even for me, I think I fell in the middle where, you know, sometimes I wasn't white enough. Sometimes I wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. brown enough, you know, and so I would have those experiences as well. But um, obviously, like everyone has, you know, you have good, you have bad. But um, yeah, man, I think for me, it was cool because I've learned how to navigate in different uh, circles and different cultures. And I'm blessed and thankful for that because now if I'm in a room with people who don't look like me, I don't feel awkward at all. Yeah. That's that's how I've grew up. So, yeah. yeah. So you've seen some of that good and bad yeah. from, from both sides of it. I like, I like you said that sometimes yeah. you weren't white enough, sometimes you weren't brown enough. Yeah. Like So you definitely experienced on mm -hmm. both sides. And that, that's something interesting, you know, just as we navigate this whole world, like that mixed children, I mean, that's a whole different experience yeah. as well. And so yeah, uh, that, that's interesting to think through. And, and, and we know, and you know, and maybe you don't know listening that like, the coolest thing I think about racial diversity is like God has created us all in his yeah. image. We yes. are all made in the image yes. of God. Like yeah. that, that's a key understanding of our Christian yes. faith. Amen. So whatever color you are, yeah. you're, you're a part of displaying yeah. a specific piece of God's image. Yes. And so you display yes. a different part of God's image mm -hmm. than I do. And I display a different part than you do. And mm -hmm. no matter what color skin yeah. you have, yeah. we, we display a different <clears throat> image of who God is. And yeah. I think that's really, I love that. really cool. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, I think, uh, you know, this climate, if you mm -hmm. want to word it that we're in, I think, you know, first off, we need to you know, we need to use Jesus as an example always, right? Mm -hmm. He was the greatest le leader that walked this earth. And for me, you know, Jesus stepped into these spaces. Mm -hmm. He stepped into these conversations. This isn't something that is new, or this yeah. isn't something that Christians aren't supposed to be talking on yeah. or con conversing on. It is. Uh, you know, Jesus came in, you know, came into this world with, you know, Samaritans being looked down upon by mm -hmm. Jewish people. And he spoke into those situations, those conversations. You know, Jesus was sitting with tax collectors and, and prostitutes and, you know, Pharisees who were the Jewish leaders. They were like, what is this? You know, we don't yeah. we don't step into these spaces, you know. So I think for me, you know, I've been I've been convicted through all mm -hmm. this that. I should be willing and, and, and brave enough to step in mm -hmm. and be willing to empathize mm -hmm. and to listen to understand. Yeah. You know, and for me, it's, I think, us as believers and Jesus being our ultimate example, um, we should be willing to have this conversation, especially within mm -hmm. the body of Christ. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a politically driven conversation yeah. at some points and I think that needs to be a biblically driven conversation mm -hmm. and so yeah I'm I'm excited I think River's Edge I've loved how we've been able to step into this space and be willing to give a voice to the voiceless and and be willing to listen and, yeah. and, and empathize I think a couple things you said I want to make sure we heard you said and I think I would take if we could find a different word beside willing to listen but like like longing to listen yeah. uh, let's say it that yeah. way like it should be a, on, on a christian it shouldn't be like i don't really want to speak into that it's it's yeah. too political it's mm. too it's too controversial it's mm. it's too scary it's too messy no no like we're supposed to and called to mm. need to be longing to yes. step into the messy mm. situations yeah. and i love how you said it like with empathy yeah. looking to listen and learn mm -hmm. um, but i think christians need to not just say 
uh, we, well, let's not talk about, no, we, yeah. we need to talk yeah. about it. 100%. We should step into this mm -hmm. and we should do everything we can. Ryan, when we talked one yeah. time, Ryan Bushnell, one of my chatting yeah. episodes, uh, he said that when, when the, oh, man, I'm gonna mess it up, but when the world, uh, is, is, um, has disunity yes. in a situation, it's our role as Christians to bring unity into yes. something. Yes. Ryan, I butchered it, but it was really good and it <laughs> hey, stuck with me, the concept at least. And I think yeah. that's what, what yeah, we're talking 100%. about is. For us, us to be convicted yeah. as Christians, say, yeah. hey, it's time for us as a church to not shy away from this, yeah. but to l step into mm -hmm. this and to yeah. listen with empathy, yeah. to understand. 100%. I think that's really good. Yeah. So, yeah. man, I, I don't know how long we've been talking. We should get a timer in here. <laughs> yeah, me, no, yeah. me, me and yeah. Carlos we are go talkers. <laughs> we talk forever and we we're loud yes, yes. and we're talkers. <laughs> and anyway, yes, uh, we forever. laugh a lot. Yes. Uh, yes. But yes. Uh, what else? I mean, anything else you're like, man... I wanted to be able to say this. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go I, share something. I think for me, even just to end with this, I think my piece, and this is speaking towards me individually, I, I'm not going to get up here to be on a soapbox to mm -hmm. tell you what you're supposed to do. I think if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you should be praying and asking God to give you mm -hmm. that discernment on this conversation. But for me, through this whole process, this whole conversation on uh, social justice and racial equality, um, I think mm -hmm. what God has spoke to me is, What's going to build a bridge to reach somebody for Christ? Is it going to be me mm -hmm. being quick to tear down what their own experiences and feelings are? Or is it going to be me empathizing and saying, hey, I don't know what that is. I, I've never experienced that. I don't even know if it's true because I've never went through it. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to step into that space and to love on you and to show you the grace and love and mercy of Christ that I've received. Mm -hmm. That now maybe through that conversation, this person goes, wow, that I know Cross loves Jesus and he just had that, was willing to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Who knows if you're that little blip on their timeline to where they're going to know who Jesus is and declare him Lord of their life. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is what we're here for yeah. is kingdom purposes. Yeah. We're here for the Great Commission. So yeah. the Great Commission is to love God and love yourself and love others as yourself. Mm -hmm. We should go out of this world and love other people like God loves us. So that's that's my conviction. That's how I feel. So God's plan A for the gospel yeah. is us. I mean, think of all the ways he could figure out how to share yeah. the, the fact that people need Jesus. And yeah. he's like, I'm going to use people, yeah. broken, hurting, messed up people. <laughs> and I love that you said our goal, the reason we step into these situations and into these conversations mm -hmm. is ultimately to build a bridge yeah. and, and point people to Jesus. Our whole life should yeah. always be about how can we point people 100%. to Jesus. People that don't know Jesus, we yeah. want to point them mm -hmm. to introduce some people that do know Jesus. We want to bring them closer to him. And all along the way, you know, yeah. just keep finding that way to do that. And 100%. so I, I think that's super good. And love people the way God loves us. Yeah, and he doesn't, he doesn't look at us differently because nope. of our skin. And no, so I think that's huge. So. Yes. Carlos Barra. My man, you, appreciate you, bro. dude. You even got a fresh haircut. For I did, us today. man. I was like, you I, was, look good. I, was, I was looking a little raggedy, and I'm like, man, we got time to chase. We'll work, I gotta... on, we'll work on that beard. Though. Oh, we'll see if we can get some. Hey, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm not to chase love me. I'm getting I'm there. I'm cutting mine. Don't tell my stop. wife. She goes out of town this week. I'm cutting it while she's gone. We'll oh, see what she's happens. She's gonna be very happy about that. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, thank you so much for those of you that took the time to listen to us today. Thank you again, Carlos, for checking yes, us out. Stay, yes. uh, stay tuned. Remember, don't forget, uh, we're working right now. Hopefully, this fall to launch some form of diversity small group to talk about yeah. race and the church and Christianity and just have that conversation. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Yes. I keep saying it as a reminder to you so you all can keep reminding me that we said it and we're going to do it. Yes. So looking forward to that. Again, college kids, be on the lookout or reach out to Carlos yes. in some way, shape, or form yeah. if you want to find out more of what that's going to look like. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're really so looking excited. forward to creating yeah. those circles for college kids around here. Whew, there's so much stuff going on. It feels like church is starting to pick back up even yeah. though COVID's starting to mm -hmm. still do its thing. Yeah. I, I feel like we're starting to yes. to see some differences exactly. in the fall and yeah, stuff. Man. So we're pumped. We know this world is crazy. We know this season of life is crazy. But keep praying. Uh, keep finding ways where you can long to l step into the mess and yes. to listen to people and to hear them and to s be a part of reconciliation because that's what we're called Amen. to do. So Amen. Amen. Jesus, you're awesome. Carlos, you're sweet. Love you guys. Everyone listening, you're great. <laughs> Love you.